Radio. This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. ER Vet is brought to you by Heroes for Healthy Pets. We're passionate about your pet's health. Welcome to ER Vet on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Justine Lee, and I'm an emergency critical care veterinary specialist and toxicologist. Thanks for joining us today. Today, we're going to be talking about how to pick a flea and tick medication for your dog or cat. We'll be right back after these messages. Listeners, I'd love to introduce you to PetPlate.com. They deliver freshly cooked human-grade dog food right to your door. I've been feeding Pet Plate to my pup for the last two weeks, and it's perfect for my picky pup and perfect for me since I'm so busy. So if you want something super healthy, really tasty, and ready to serve, go to PetPlate.com forward slash spot to get 30% off your first box. P-E-T-P-L-A-T-E dot com. It's not just a sneeze. (laughs) It could be the pathway to disease. Your dog is at risk for contracting dog flu. That's why it's important to vaccinate your dog for dog flu. Get your dog vaccinated today. Visit dogflu.com for more information. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back to Pet Life Radio. Today on ER Vet, we're going to be talking about an important topic, how to protect your dog and cat from fleas and ticks. Now, there are a ton of different medications out there. And the reason why I wanted to talk about this is because yesterday when I was actually working in the ER, I saw a cat that was accidentally poisoned by a dog flea and tick medication. And so I wanted to be able to educate people on some of the dangers that we worry about with something called pyrethrin toxicity. Now, for those of you guys who don't like chemicals, I'm going to tell you that pyrethrins are actually a chemical derivative from the natural chrysanthemum or mum flower. And they're actually a really effective flea and tick or insecticide medication. Most of the products in your house actually probably contain pyrethrins. If you ever use an ant spray, like Raid ant spray, or you use some kind of flea and tick shampoo, most of these are very low concentration pyrethrins. And so again, really common and effective chemical. However, when it comes to dogs and cats, it's really important to realize that they metabolize pyrethrins differently. With dogs, pyrethrins are very, very effective. They're actually one of the most common, popular, topical spot-on products. In other words, those types of products that you put on top of your dog's back or neck. These are called topicals. And unfortunately, if you don't read the instructions correctly and you buy small dog flea and tick product that contains a pyrethrin and you put it on a big cat, it can actually be really poisonous. Most topical flea and tick medications are high concentration pyrethrins, usually 40 to 60% concentrations. Now, Dogs can handle that just fine. However, cats can't. Cats, of course, have to be different. And they have an altered liver metabolism. It's called altered glucuronidation, which means they can't metabolize drugs or chemicals the same way that dogs can. Again, flea and tick medications that contain these high concentration pyrethrins, super, super safe for dogs. But again, in cats, really dangerous. It can actually result in death. So what do you need to know? If you're a cat owner, you always want to look and make sure that you're reading that flea and tick medication appropriately. You want to make sure that it's safe for use in cats. And that's because cats can only handle a one to 5% concentration of pyrethrins. Anything above that is really poisonous and typically results in central nervous system signs or what we call neurologic signs. Things like walking drunk, facial tremors, whole body tremors, and they can actually progress to seizures and death untreated. So yesterday when I was working in the ER vet, I saw a cat that was brought in by an owner and she did not put the flea and tick medication on her cat. She was very aware of the dangers of it. However, 
she had put this high concentration pyrethrin on two of her dogs and her cat loved to sleep with one of her dogs and would actually groom that dog. And unfortunately, that cat actually had secondary exposure to that high concentration dog flea and tick product. So this is why I'm really passionate about educating pet owners on how to pick the right flea and tick medication. There's definitely a couple of pros and cons of using different products out there. And of course, I'm going to tell you when in doubt, of course, always check with your veterinarian about the best product to use or the one that they feel the most comfortable with. Some cat owners can't pill their cat. So giving an oral medication is too hard. They prefer topical while other people prefer an oral flea and tick medication because they don't want to lie next to the chemical. Here's my philosophy. As a toxicologist and as a criticalist, I want you to make sure that you're using a safe product that doesn't result in secondary exposure, like in the case where the cat was accidentally poisoned. For this reason, I've actually started to move away from some of these topical medications. The topical ones, again, are super easy to put on. You just part the hair, apply it directly onto the skin behind the neck area. And again, really easy for pet owners who can't pill their pet. However, there's a couple of rare side effects we have to be aware of. First of all, in cat flea and tick medications, very rarely they can get a temporary hair loss at the site of application. The other important thing to realize is that product, depending on what the chemical is within that flea and tick medication, has to completely dry before you let your dog swim. Why is this important? Because as a veterinarian, I love all species of animals, and that includes fish. If you have a dog and you just put a high concentration pyrethrin on their back and that product hasn't dried, unfortunately, if your dog jumps into a koi pond or goes swimming in a lake, it can actually cause death to the fish in that pond. Again, fish are really, really sensitive to pyrethrins. The other reason why I have moved away personally from topicals is because I sleep with my dog and cat in the bed and I cuddle with them. They spoon with me. So I'm in really close contact with my pets and I don't want that accidental exposure of that chemical to me. Now, again, it is safe in humans, but we don't want that exposure at all. We don't know what the long term effects are. And again, that's one of the reasons why I really prefer oral medication. The second option you have for flea and tick medication besides topical medication are oral medication. These are usually delivered in a tasty medication and they're usually a pork based or beef based product and they're usually a hypoallergenic product. So if your dog or cat has food allergies, it's typically okay to still use these products. Now, if dogs or cats have a sensitive stomach, Sometimes these oral products can cause stomach upset. So very rarely it can cause vomiting. Now, some of these oral flea and tick medications last one month up to three months. And so you always want to check with your veterinarian when the best time to start it is. And that's going to depend on where you live. If you live in Florida, you should use flea and tick medication year round. I live in Minnesota where there's six months of winter. So I usually recommend starting a flea and tick medication in April and waiting until there's a really hard frost, which is typically October. So I always continue that flea and tick medication from typically March to April to October. The third way of being able to use flea and tick medication is with a collar. Now, 20 years ago, most veterinarians didn't advocate for collars. And the reason why was because they weren't really effective except in the front half of the body. That's changed a little bit recently. Now, I will say there's a couple of differences with collars. They're either prescription or over the counter. Most over-the-counter collars honestly aren't too effective in my opinion. These are usually low concentration pyrethrins, and honestly, they don't work quite as well. However, the prescription collars can be very, very effective. And there's a couple of ones out there. One contains a product called Amitraz, and another one's called Soresto, which is a high concentration pyrethrin or a low concentration pyrethrin, depending on if you're using the dog or cat one. The important thing to realize with collars is they can sometimes cause irritation at the site of the collar on the skin. And this is whether or not you use an over-the-counter one or a prescription one. Sometimes they can fall off. Sometimes they get caught on a dog's leg or a cat's leg while they're scratching. So you do want to use some caution with it. I will say with some of the prescription ones, you do want to be careful if your dog accidentally ingests the collar, especially with ones that contain the active ingredient Amitraz, because that can be really poisonous. It's totally treatable. And don't worry, there's an antidote, but you have to go to your veterinarian or your ER vet to get that treated. 
We'll continue with this really important topic right after these messages from our sponsors. We'd like to thank our sponsor for today's episode, Pretty Litter. A bag of Pretty Litter weighs four pounds, and it's really lightweight. Most litter weighs between 20 to 40 pounds. It's also long-lasting. One bag of Pretty Litter lasts an entire month for one cat. It's also got built-in health monitoring. It keeps tabs on your cat's health by changing color if it detects potential health issues. For example, Pretty Litter may turn green or blue if it notices a high urinary pH, which can lead to bladder crystals and stone formation. If Pretty Litter turns purple or red, it may indicate that there's blood in there. And this can oftentimes be a sign of bladder stones, crystals, bladder inflammation, or even a urinary tract infection. If you notice an unusual color, when in doubt, consult with your veterinarian to find out what's going on. We'll want to get a sterile urine sample, but it could be a helpful indicator by keeping tab on your cat's health. Pretty Litter also has microcrystals that absorb the urine and odor, so it's got amazing odor control. Also, it's easy maintenance. All you have to do is scoop the poop. No more clumping. Pretty Litter is delivered straight to your door every month with free shipping, so it's hassle-free and convenient. Go to prettylittercats.com slash ervet and use the promo code ervet for 20% off your first subscription order. What we're talking about today are the different types of flea and tick medications that are available for your dog and cat. And so these are my general tips on how to pick a flea and tick medication. We talked about topicals versus orals versus collars. And again, when in doubt, talk to your veterinarian. The reason why I'm harping on this is because if your dog or your cat go outside, even just for a few minutes, it's really important that you keep your pet protected. Not only is it really expensive to treat your house if you have a flea infestation, but it can pose a lot of dangers to your pet. So my dog goes outside into the backyard and my cat is an indoor cat, but I even still use occasional flea and tick medication on my cat. And the main reason why is I wanna make sure I never have fleas in the environment. And the reason why is because one flea can lay up to 400 eggs. If you're using flea and tick medication and you notice that you're still seeing fleas, talk to your veterinarian about that. Because one of the things I worry about, fleas may have hatched an egg. And so depending on the cycle, you may have eggs periodically hatching, resulting in reinfestation of your house. That's why I'm such an advocate of making sure that your dog is safe. It's also really uncomfortable for your dog or cat to have fleas or ticks. Not only can it cause a lot of reaction where they're constantly itchy, but they can actually spread certain types of infection or result in certain types of anemia. I have seen young kittens that are only four to five weeks of age that come in that are so anemic that have pale white gums because they have such a bad flea infestation that they only have a quarter of the red blood cells that a normal cat has. So some flea burdens can be so severe that they're actually sucking so much blood out of that pet that it causes anemia. Now, when certain dogs with skin sensitivities or allergies, it may only take one flea biting your dog or rarely your cat to result in something called flea allergy dermatitis. And what that means is your dog or cat may be bitten by just one flea and that saliva from the flea triggers this massive immune response and your dog or cat end up being really, really itchy and getting a severe skin infection. So again, depending on where you live, you wanna make sure that you're protecting your dog and cat. I also wanted to talk about ticks. Now I have lived and practiced veterinary medicine in about five of the 13 top Lyme states. In other words, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York, Massachusetts, and Minnesota. We are so endemic with ticks. In fact, I'm embarrassed to say I was hiking in the woods, went into the emergency room the other day to work, and I found two ticks crawling on me, and one was just freshly embedded. So we want to make sure to protect our dogs and cats from ticks. Unfortunately, ticks can spread certain types of disease. They can contain Borrelia, which spreads Lyme disease to you, or something called Anaplasma, or lichia. These are all really dangerous types of tick-borne infections that can cause lameness, chronic arthritis, even kidney failure, anemia, or low platelet counts. So you always want to make sure that you're protecting your dog and cat. When it comes to the different types of products out there, I already mentioned that the most common is typically a high concentration pyrethrin for dogs. And again, these are typically topical products. But just be aware, there are a couple of different products out there. The second type of class of drugs that I wanted to talk about is a class of isoxazoline products. 
And these basically inhibit the flea and ticks nervous system. Very, very safe for mammals, but again, it only affects the bug's nervous system. These kill flea and ticks really, really quickly. And so there's about four different types that are available on the market. You've probably heard of Nexgard, Brevecto, Semperica, and Credelio. These are all oral types of medications and again, work really quickly. You typically want to give them with food. The nice thing about these is they typically kill adult fleas and ticks within a few hours and again, are highly effective and very, very fast killing. You do want to make sure to check with your veterinarian. If your dog has a history of seizures, I do not generally recommend these oral products. So when in doubt, talk to your veterinarian about these products. Now, some of the other types of products that you'll often see contain ingredients called fipronil. And fipronil also affects the neurologic system of the insect. So fipronil is often found in Costco products. They're often found in Frontline. So you've probably heard of some of the brand names of this. Now, another ingredient that a lot of people will see in their flea and tick medication is what we call insect birth control. And so this is basically a growth regulator and it acts at a hormone that prevents flea eggs and larvae from developing properly. So depending on what type of product you use, they may not actually kill the adult flea and tick, but they may prevent that flea egg or larva from actually developing properly. And sometimes you'll actually see two of these products mixed in together. Now, previously I had mentioned collars. One of them is an Amitraz collar. And this is a drug called an MOA that also affects the neurologic system of the insect. I used to use these collars when I went hiking in Northern Minnesota because it was so infested with ticks. So not only did I have my dog on a monthly flea and tick medication, but I would also use one of these Preventic Amitraz collars on top of that when I traveled up north. Now, these are collars that have a very wide margin of safety. And honestly, they typically last about three months. They're great add-on protection if you're going to a tick infested area and they're relatively inexpensive keep in mind that they're not waterproof they're water resistant which means if your dog gets splashed that's okay but your dog shouldn't swim with it another important thing to note is they don't kill fleas so again you always want to make sure if you're using some of these products that they kill both fleas and ticks the other type of prescription collar I wanted to talk about contains something called imidacloprid and flumethrin. Now, flumethrin is a pyrethrin. And my little hint, if you're not sure, is just look at the ingredient. If it ends with a thrin, T-H-R-I-N, it's in the class of pyrethrins or permethrins. And again, this is a chemical derivative from the chrysanthemum flower. This new prescription collar called Soresto does kill adult fleas and ticks on dogs and cats. So you want to make sure to use a specific cat collar for a cat. You can't use a small dog collar for a cat. So just be aware of that. The nice thing about the Soresto prescription collar is it lasts about eight months. And again, it's also going to affect the nervous system of the insect. This is one of the few products that also repels fleas and ticks. So a lot of these products don't repel, they only kill the adult. So when in doubt, check with your veterinarian. Now the Soresto collar is defined as being waterproof. I personally don't like dogs to swim in the water because I worry about contamination of that water. So when in doubt, I personally take it off if your dog swims frequently. Two other ingredients that I wanted to talk about are spinosad and milbamycin. If you've ever heard of ivermectin or milbamycin, these oftentimes are used for heartworm preventative. You want to make sure that you're not confusing the two. One of the big mistakes that I see in the ER is when people say their dog is on heartworm medication, but when I ask them what brand, they're actually telling me a flea and tick medication. Remember, fleas and ticks and heartworm are completely different. Flea and ticks are definitely going to be of a concern, but heartworm can be fatal. We'll talk about that in another episode of ER Vet, but just be aware there are some products out there that have combined flea medication and also heartworm preventative. So drugs like Trifexis. When in doubt, check with your veterinarian. When in doubt, make sure your dog or cat are protected from fleas and ticks and heartworm. We'll talk about that next time. Well, that brings us to the end of today's show. Find me at Dr. Justine Lee on Facebook at Dr. Justine Lee or email me any of your pet questions at drjustine at petliferadio.com. 
With that, we're out of time, and we'd like to thank Mark Winter, our producer, for making this show possible. See you at the next episode of ER Vet. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.